Everyone here today is lucky, and not just because you get to attend a fancy tech conference in the wonderful city of Barcelona. We're lucky because we're alive during the most exciting time in human history. Technological progress is happening at a faster rate than ever before, quickly making the dreams of science fiction a reality. In addition, a new scientific paradigm is emerging that is arguably more profound than any that have come before it. This paradigm shift is a result of breakthroughs in complexity science, which is the unification of the sciences, including but not limited to physics, biology, cognitive science, and evolutionary theory. <clears throat> According to complexity science, the universe itself is a self-organizing system. And I explain this view in my book, The Romance of Reality, How the Universe Organizes Itself to Create Life, Consciousness, and Cosmic Complexity. But to really understand this view, we have to understand the paradigm that it's replacing, the reductionist paradigm. The reductionist paradigm was the reigning scientific paradigm of the 20th century, and it basically says that the universe is meaningless, purposeless, and winding down. This suggests that life is just a transient statistical fluctuation away from the overall trend of increasing cosmic disorder. This means humanity is doomed to a temporary existence. Fortunately, none of that seems to be true. These ideas were based on the second law of thermodynamics and a misapplication of that law. Second law of thermodynamics applies to closed systems, not to life, which is an open system, and not to the universe as a whole, which is expanding at an accelerating rate due to the mysterious force known as dark energy. So then, What is the new cosmic story? Cosmic evolution is a process of hierarchical organization where nature's simplest components come together to form larger wholes, and those building blocks form the next level of complexity. And this process continues into the future. So atoms come together to form molecules. Molecules come together to form cells. Cells have come together to form societies like ant colonies and human civilization. And now, something like a global brain is emerging on the Earth. That's an interconnected network of humans exchanging information through their devices in much the same way that neurons exchange information in the brain. So, where's this process leading? Well, biological evolution, cultural and technological evolution are part of this fundamental cosmic evolution process. But biological evolution is a very special stage because it's when inanimate matter begins to wake up and experience the world. The great cosmologist and educator Carl Sagan said, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. So this is where it's headed, according to Ray Kurzweil, Google's director of engineering. He thinks we're on our way to a technological singularity. A singularity is a point at which technolo technology progresses so fast that we can't see exactly where it's going. However, it doesn't mean that we can't see where it's going in rough outline. So he believes that humans will merge with our technology and then spread through the universe at an accelerating rate, infusing all the inanimate matter in the world with consciousness and intelligence. The ultimate goal of this process is this point where the universe itself wakes up. This isn't a new idea. A hundred years ago, the French philosopher and scientist Teilhard de Chardin had this theory, and he called it the omega point. The omega point is a point at which mind and cosmos merge into one. It's a pretty mind-blowing idea. Let's bring things back down to Earth. The skeptics in the crowd are probably thinking, look around us. It certainly doesn't seem like progress is inevitable. The existential threats are piling up. World War III doesn't seem just possible anymore. It seems uh, inevitable, unless we do something to collectively avoid that outcome. AI promises great things for humanity, uh, but it also presents an existential threat as big as any other. Climate change is destroying entire, entire ecosystems, and uh, this uh, threatens the balance of life on Earth. So how do you explain this paradox? If progress is inevitable, why does humanity face all these existential threats? 
This paradox can be explained by a simple principle that I call Popper's principle, named after the philosopher of science Karl Popper, who saw this truth about nature and evolution over a half century ago. The principle simply states that problems create progress. That means it's the problems we face that force us to seek out the solutions that push progress forward. As long as the problems continue, the solutions will also continue. If the problems stopped and we weren't forced to seek out new solutions, society would become stagnant. I don't want to give the impression that progress happens on its own. We have to work for it. Evolution is a knowledge creation process that works through error correction. And if we're not careful, we could be the errors that get corrected. Success isn't guaranteed for any specific civilization. But I'm optimistic about the future because I believe the people at this conference are working on the solutions that will take us to the technological singularity and beyond. Those solutions are quantum computing, nanotechnology, and life extension research. Now, I don't want to put any more pressure on you people, but it's not only your human peers who are depending on you for success, it also seems to be the universe as a whole that's depending on you. It seems to be waking up through this process I've described, but it can't do it alone. It curiously depends on the assistance of humble mortals like ourselves. So what's the moral of this story? It's that you are not a cosmic accident. You are a cosmic imperative. Now let's get to work. Thank you.